So I don't really do this too often, but I want to get something off my chest because I know there's going to be other people who relate to this, um, to me and my um, past and my journey to where I am now to this point of sobriety. So back in the day, early 2000s, I was very much an alcoholic. I would drink every day. I'd always be at a state of drunkenness and... um. At that point, I didn't have a job. I obviously didn't have income because I didn't have a job. So I'd ask a bunch of friends like, hey, I need help. I'm trying to get back on my feet. But I'd use that money for alcohol. And I would do just a lot of manipulation for the people around me. It got to a point where my fa- there was an intervention with my family and friends. And that really changed my life. It just, it's it was just such a groundbreaking moment of realization of where I was at the time and I'm so grateful for all my family and friends but yeah now I now I'm so grateful that yeah I'm just I I still drink a little bit like socially but not like definitely not as much as I used to so I just want to tell you a story about a really bad time that I had and all because of alcohol and consuming too much alcohol just so other people are aware that this problem exists and it is an illness and it happens all the time and just not a lot of people are aware that this kind of stuff happens because it's so taboo it's so um not talked about so it's just an awareness kind of thing that i'm doing so one night i went to a bar i was really broke and i was just like really needing some alcohol and one thing I'd do is um, I'd just manipulate strangers even to to get me drinks for free. Yeah, I'd just manipulate these people. So this one night, I go to the bar. There's only like one other dude at the bar. It's kind of empty because it's getting late at night. He looks kind of familiar. I sit down next to him and I ask the bartender, like, what's, what's the cheapest drink that they have? And... Um, so they tell me whatever the cheapest drink is, vodka or whatever. And so at that point, I, I reach into my pocket, pull out a bunch of change, like loose, loose change, like pennies and um, nickels and stuff. And I'm just like trying to scrounge up enough money to get this really cheap drink. So I'm like doing that. and But then like in my peripherals, I'm looking, making sure this guy next to me is like noticing that I'm doing this to manipulate him, to feel bad for me. Um, that I can't even pay for a cheap drink and so um, he looks pretty wealthy he just like seems like really like well-dressed and pretty wealthy and then so I like do a double take because I like realize I think he's like he looks really familiar and then I realize oh he's that like early 2000s rapper like he got pretty popular at one point I think he had a few hit songs I think his name was like T-Pain and he asked me, I'm gonna buy you a drink. I am so sorry. I got this free trial of auto-tune and I just had to use it. And that was the only kind of punchline thing that I could think of. And I realized that addiction to alcohol is still a thing and it's still an illness. And if you know anyone who is suffering from this, there are ways to intervene and help them out because help them out. They're your friends. You don't want to see them go to a bar and run into T Pain and he's like, Let me buy you a drink. <laughs> I mean, that would be kind of cool though if you run into T Pain and then. Every time you talk to him, it was auto-tune because he brings around a computer and he hooks up auto-tune to himself. And that would be kind of strange, but kind of funny. I'm so sorry. Please drink responsibly. Bye, man.